I've chosen to do one thing in particular to open up my items to a bigger marketplace, which in essence is doing what promoted listings is supposed to do. Hello everybody, welcome back to Commonwealth Flipper. Welcome to the cabin. Thanks for joining us today. You know, I've been doing quite a few things differently than I've ever done in the past. Not major changes, but a few changes that I strategically tried in order to see if it would have an effect on this roller coaster a little bit. And for me, it's been working pretty well. I know that's not the case for everybody, but I wanted to talk about, once again, I've mentioned these before, but more in a systematic way. Some of the things I've been doing that have really been working, and I also saw a strategy out there that just doesn't make sense in my mind, but it's something that a lot of people employ, and I wanna get your opinion on that too, but we've got a lot of great sales today. Let's go take a look. And I think I am gonna pull these first few items because they're pretty relevant to what I wanna talk about, at least three of the first four. And then after we talk about that, we'll get into this strategy that somebody was telling me about that they use, which I think isn't a bad strategy, but it doesn't make total sense to me. This first box here was sitting underneath that corning, Amber Vision's corning ware, and it's been sitting there for a long time, and it was one of the things we took down and put back up in a different way, and it sold, and I'm gonna talk about that in a second, but let me show it to you. Got this from my buddy John, and who used to be a coach of mine, an assistant coach of mine when I was a baseball coach. And this is just a, well, I don't know what the heck they call it, but I could look at the title. But it's a phone that's, it's like an extension that sits in like your garage or something. And this thing right here, I had never seen one before, so I know I, I figured I'd grab it. And that's all for $100 plus shipping. For those of you who care about this stuff, it is called a, a Bell System Western Electric, which is something I sell all the time. But this is a space saver rotary phone 41a 100 bucks plus shipping next item is inside wallen's out here and turner's out here playing ball so if you hear the bouncing tennis ball in there while we're recording that's what it is this snap-on toolbox right here now this item has to do with both of the topics today the strategy that doesn't quite make sense to me even though it makes a little sense and then what i've been doing that i think really has helped this snap-on toolbox is i can't remember exactly what i paid for it and i don't want to tell people and be wrong but look at how clean the inside of that is so it's like it's never been used all that stuff is new however the outside has a little bit of wear and tear on it so from being hauled around or whatever and that toolbox believe it or not see that was the handle that goes there that's never been put on it so for 114 dollars and change plus shipping all right, this time I came back and Pepper's here too. They don't want to come in today, I guess. I see that and look who runs in. So this is a Panasonic 8-track player and it was tested and working. Has little speaker cords and everything. And that sold. Been waiting forever to sell this. This, this was something I bought on Garage Sale Nation channel, a private pick over a year ago. And we just hadn't got to it. It was in the death pile. And I've sold three eight track now in the last few weeks, $55 plus shipping. By the way, I misspoke on this, $113.95 plus shipping. Looks like they both came in. You look like you got something in your little snout. Did you get into something? Some stickers? I hope that don't hurt. Next item is very different than these three, but it's gonna get us close with these first four sales to about 300 bucks plus shipping. Maybe not quite there, but getting there anyway. And, oh, it's going to be Tupperware. Sometimes I put the tiny Tupperware over there, but most of the Tupperware goes in here. This is just a little teaspoon set and a little yellow one. I usually won't pay more than a few bucks for this couple. I think I paid a dollar for this one. And it sold for, what did it sell for? $15 plus shipping. So over the last month or so, I've had a lot of people email me and send me messages and DM me on Instagram and ask me, about why I'm doing what I'm doing. So why I took the store down, talked about flat rate shipping and how much you're charging and all that. And I haven't answered the questions because really I'm experimenting with a few things. I'm trying out a few things because of the difficulties of the past few months. And I just wasn't comfortable giving advice to people and I just don't know. Now I still just don't know. And I'm not saying this is the right thing to do and I'm not saying this is the thing for everybody to do. 
but I've tried a few different things. You know, I've said this before, I resist promoted listings. The way you get more sales, of course, is get more eyeballs on your items, have items that are good to sell, items that people want, have decent sell-through rates, and have good prices. So you can do promoted listings to get more eyeballs on them. You can do a YouTube channel to get more eyeballs on them. You can do all kinds of things. I've chosen to do one thing in particular to open up my items to a bigger marketplace, which in essence is doing what promoted listings is supposed to do. Two reasons why I've done this. One is a lot of folks watch this channel from all over the place. And sometimes I'll get messages like, I would buy this item, but the shipping cost is outrageous. And they're upset with me like I'm overcharging. And that was basically due to the fact that I was doing calculated shipping on large items. And people on the West Coast are like, this is crazy. And I'd hear negative feedback. Now, that's not the major reason. The other reason is I listen to a lot of people who are very knowledgeable. A lot of them know far more about eBay than I do. Certainly the inner workings. I never concentrate on that stuff very much. I just leave it to those folks. It's not my mentality. It's not what I enjoy. But those folks were doing promoted listings and they were tracking their sales via promoted listings. And I've seen a lot of people say that the promoted listing sales is on a downward trend. I think there's two reasons for that. Notice I said, I think there's two reasons for that. I don't know this for sure. And I certainly don't want to tell people don't promote listings. Turns out they're doing something because it might be the right thing for you. I know it's the right thing for a lot of people. I think there's two things. There's a psychological effect. When you promote a listing, you know there's added cost to it when it sells via promoted listing and it makes you resist lowering your price a little bit. I get that. Whether that's conscious or unconscious, I think that that happens. And in this marketplace, there are some items that you need to lower your price a little bit. The second reason I'm more comfortable with this than I am with the one I just said is I believe, especially with the crazy ups and downs over the last, say, four or five months, I think a lot of people got discouraged and they did start to promote their listings, hoping there'd be something that could change what was happening. And so there's been a steady increase of people promoting listings. I think it's gone up and up. And so if there's more and more and more and more promoted listings, I think those items are being seen by less and less and less people just because there's more people promoting. Now, that's not necessarily a negative. That's just, you know, because you're not getting charged unless the item sells via a promotion. But you're seeing less and less of a benefit, at least on that forefront of it, at least as you're looking at the numbers. So that brings me to the point of the strategy I wanted to employ. And I've always been an advocate of different items doing different things, calculated, promoted, or excuse me, calculated free shipping or flat rate shipping. I decided instead of going the promoted route, which so many people I was I saw doing, I would do something different and see what the results were. The results have been terrific. Now, I don't know if it's because of this or because we've been listing more. It's probably a combination of both. But I can tell you right now, I'm selling larger items. These types of things, these aren't huge, but that's heavy, right? Size makes a bigger difference than weight, of course. This kind of stuff is selling much more rapidly for me. And they're higher items. They're higher priced items, which is really cool. We've been selling a lot of it. I know because it's paying a bunch of ship half this stuff, but the sales have gone up. So my basic strategy was I was going to put flat rate shipping on almost everything. And I did the you know, shipping rules and put them in there and all that. And it was a bit of a gamble and it still is a bit of a gamble day to day. But overall, we've increased our sales to the West Coast dramatically, which is not something I've necessarily wanted to do in the past. But I've been looking into the numbers, seeing how many things I'm shipping out for more. It cost me more money than I actually charged versus how many things close by are still selling where I'm making money on the shipping. And I've been pleasantly surprised. I don't make as much money as I used to when I did calculated shipping on the shipping part of it, but I've been selling so much more that it outweighs it by far, in my opinion. Now, I got to tell you, I would not have done this. I would not have done this in last year's shipping atmosphere. I would not have done it. But with the institution of USPS Ground Advantage, the beginning of that, it gives options to the shipper that are far more affordable. And I've really liked it. But there's one more thing, and I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it. UPS is becoming extremely competitive. I would not have guessed that, especially when they went through that little battle 
for the, the labor battle that they went through. But I think they saw an opening to increase their market share and they have done a tremendous job of that in my opinion. And the market share has got to have gone up because I'm shipping UPS far more than I ever used to do. It's beating USPS ground advantage a lot, especially every time I send something to California, UPS ground is almost always the option I take. Let me give you two examples here. Let's just take this one and this one as an example. I did flat rate shipping on this and I did it for $15.99. And it's a pretty heavy little box. It's probably, a, I don't know, let me measure it out. Maybe two feet, does that sound about right? Maybe a little less. So this item right here is, making a lot of noise there, just a little less than two feet. So it's gonna be in a, in a box that will be about two, two feet. It's not very tall. And so I did flat rate $15.99. And of course, when this sold, I had to go on and look and see. I was hoping it didn't go to California. It did go to California. This item, USPS Ground Advantage, would be rather expensive. But UPS Ground for this item right here is going to be just over $20. I charged $15.99 and it's going to California. So I'm losing money in shipping, but it sold for full price. It was opened up to a market across the country, so it sold quickly. I did not promote it, and I'm very happy with that sale. It's a $114 sale. You know, what would you pay in promoted fees? More, I, I believe, well, I know, probably more in promoted fees for this. If you didn't do that, you'd be making less money even at promoted. Now, this item over here, I charged, I don't know what did I charge on this one. Hold on a minute. I charge $9.99 flat rate shipping. It's going to California again, which is something that you don't like to see. But even at that, it's going to cost me $9.88 USPS Ground Advantage. And I haven't even checked UPS. Let me check it. Ground Advantage, that one's $20. Bucks. Same price, same price on that. So USPS Ground Advantage, or excuse me. Yeah, I think I got that right. USPS Ground Advantage is the best option here. UPS Ground is the best option here. And I will lose just a little bit. You know, $9.99 is going to cost $9.88. And you got to pay the fees on that. So you're going to lose a buck or two on that. But I got to sell for $100, for goodness sake. Now, a bunch have been winners at my flat rate shipping. And my flat rate is lower than a lot of folks. And the reason I did it is because I wanted to clear out a ton of merchandise this winter. And I wanted to be extremely competitive. I suspect I'm going to up my flat rate shipping come the new year. But... This one right here, let me look at this one. This one is super heavy. I charge the same as this one, $15.99 flat rate shipping. It is a heavy one. It's probably going to be eight, nine, maybe 10 pounds to ship this thing. I think it's probably nine is what I had on there. This one I charged $15.99 flat rate shipping, and it is going to Virginia. So this is going to be a winner for me. I think even Priority Mail, $9.21 for Priority Mail, I could even use that box. I probably will because I don't have to pay for that Priority Box where if I ship UPS or USPS Grand Advantage, I got to pay for the box. So $9.21 is probably what I'll pay, but I might find a different box, Recycle One. Somebody sent me something in or something like that or go to the dump and grab one. So the other prices are $8.81 USPS Grand Advantage or UPS is eight dollars and 63 cents so for 50 60 cents i'll probably just use that unless i have the perfect box and ship it in there so i've got a winner here so overall i'm about break even on shipping and i'm getting sales quickly without having to accept best offer very much and without having to pay a promoted listing fee and the bigger items are selling the higher dollar items are selling and so far it's working my heater just turned on in here i'll have to turn it off so it doesn't make a bunch of noise but i'm not saying this is the best option for everybody there are pluses and minuses to all of it there's pluses and minuses to free shipping as well because free shipping does that exact same thing and you're building in that shipping price and you're rolling the dice a little bit which is what i'm doing here I think there are advantages, however, to not doing free shipping, especially when it comes to returns and stuff like that. Um, so I don't do it. I, I don't think free shipping is the right way to go on a lot of items. I think on small stuff like this, it's not the end of the world. I still do free shipping on some items. But the bulk of my items going forward, I think almost all of them are going to be with flat rate shipping. And just for clarity's sake, for you newbies out there, I don't mean USPS flat rate boxes. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about me putting a flat rate shipping price on, on the item. And if you want to exclude certain places, 
you can do that as well. Let me know what you're doing out there. I'm not, this isn't me preaching to anybody, but I've had so many questions that I figured I would explain what I'm doing. And you can go on and look at my flat rate prices and some of them, I've had two items that I really took a bath on, but I've had so many, I didn't lose money, I made money because I wouldn't put that flat rate. I still do calculated shipping on some massive things that don't have a really, really high price and there's a, not a whole lot of margin in them. So I still do it, there's still a time to do it but I don't do it much. Next item I had to run inside and grab here. Now, <laughs> some of you will probably think I'm absolutely insane here, but hear me out. I put $15.99 on this giant train set as a, as a flat rate shipper, and I put a hundred bucks on it, and I didn't have to take a best offer. However, if somebody would have sent me a best offer on this, I would have checked to see where they're from. If this thing was going to, you know, Seattle, I would have said, no, you're gonna have to pay full price for it. But if somebody was close by and wanted $10 off or something, I would do it because $15.99, this thing would have cost 30 bucks to send to the Pacific Northwest, UPS. It's not very tall, thank goodness. It is wide, but the total bulk here is not too huge. And so I would have lost money there. However, you know, I really wouldn't have. I would have made money on this sale and the volume and the quickness of sales has made up for any losses. But once again, I won the shipping lottery on this one. It's going to Mannequin, Virginia, which I've never heard of before, but I have to look it up. And so this one, I'm going to make money on. This is not going to cost me, but maybe $12, $13 to ship it. I charged 16 bucks, and I'm going to make just a tiny bit of money, but I'm going to make a bunch of money on that sale, and it's sold, and it's out of here. So I am absolutely not suggesting pe people take that risk, especially if you're working on tight margins and you need money to come in to pay your bills because you will have some that might hurt a little bit. They might sting a little bit. And I certainly wouldn't suggest $15.99 for that. So it's just something that I did. Just I've been doing this for a while and I know it's like, okay, I'll check all the shipping options. I'll try to figure out the, the worst case scenario is I'll lose this much money on shipping. I'm going to make more on the sale. I can reject offers from the places I want to reject offers. I think going into next year, that would at least be a $20 flat rate shipper. And it might be $24 flat rate shipper because I'm trying to clean out a bunch of stuff before the springtime. But for you flat rate shippers out there who just put a flat rate on just about anything, let me know some of your horror stories. I would like people to get the whole story down below. There can be some tough ones. Let me know if you look at the location of the buyer before you accept an offer as well. I think that's key in all of this. I'm going to pull a few more items and then get to the one strategy that I gets me scratching my head a little bit. I've talked with a bunch of resellers about this. Carrie included American Arbitrage. I don't think he quite sees eye to eye with me on this one. Before I pull those, though, let's do a giveaway. We have been giving away American Bubble Boys, my go-to tape. We've given away all of the ones that we're supposed to give away. Thank you, Joel, again. However, one person hasn't claimed it yet. We're going to give them another week or so, and if not, we'll give away another six-pack code Commonwealth down below. Use the American Bubble Boy link. You get 5% off. But we do have one more eBay gift card that I purchased down the street here at CVS. Let me know if anybody's doing that out there this year for Christmas, giving away eBay gift cards to people that they know, to their kids, teachers, whatever. If you're gonna give away gift cards anyways, give this one away. And we're doing hashtag giving an eBay gift card for Christmas or for Hanukkah or whatever holiday you celebrate out there. We give them away for Christmas here. So at any rate, $25, put hashtag giving eBay gift card for whatever you want out there. And I'll pick a winner in two videos. And every time I mention that, I have to give credit to Leroy Blood, Sweat & Cell over on the RIN network. He was the first one that I ever heard say that. And I thought, hmm, maybe we won't give away Amazon gift cards. We'll give away eBay gift cards and help a bunch of resellers out there. I've been buying stuff. Matter of fact, I just bought something the other day. Used a friend's affiliate link, which we talked about in the last, last episode. And I try to find those listings that are clearly not some giant corporation selling stuff off. And I've been trying to pick listings out there of just mom and pop resellers. And I think I did on this one. I'll show it to you next episode. It's a little tool to cut boxes quicker. In the age of UPS becoming more competitive and USPS ground advantage, I've found that these brown boxes are in demand. And oftentimes you got to cut them down. And that's what we've been doing a lot lately. I'll have to do one for this. That box is ready to go right here. See that one? And that's an expensive box, right? So that's something else to think about too. You know, that's a dollar or something. I can't remember what. 
but we'll have to cut that one way down. We'll use the excess for other stuff. There's my little excess boxes back there. And we'll certainly have to use one for that as well. And we don't use nearly as many of these. By the way, I haven't mentioned the folks who have bought plans for the Commodore Picker shipping table in a while. I need to go on there and check. Sold, uh, I think it's a vintage Atlantis t-shirt. It is not single stitch. It is new with tags. And I love selling vintage tees. That one sold for, let's see, 2004. So it's not quite vintage or close to it, though. Sold for $16 plus shipping. And I think Sherry is a viewer. She said, uh, thanks for the Paradise Island t-shirt. So I'm assuming you're a viewer, but maybe you're not. Sometimes we get messages from people just who are nice. 16 bucks plus shipping. Sherry, thank you. And the next item, which I know is a viewer sale. I don't know about the last one. Another purse sale. We'd slow down a little bit, but we're still getting purse sales. This one had a few little issues, but it was in pretty darn good shape. Old Coach Signature Edition, $27.54 after an offer, plus shipping. Like I said, this one went to a viewer, to Kathy, Kathy Ann. And I, I think Ann is the most popular middle name in America. I believe that's right. I read that somewhere. Anyway, thank you. God bless you and your family. P.S. Still watching all three different video choices. I assume that means Commonwealth Picker, Commonwealth Flipper, Garage Sale Nation, although it might mean Trash to Cash Podcast. I don't know. Anyway, thank you. And let's see, still enjoying them all. Thank you for all you do to help us little-time resellers. You, sir, are appreciated. Well, that's very kind of you. Harmony Renew. Oh, boy. Renew. Renews. Deals? I don't know. I struggle reading. <laughs> I could teach history, though. All right, have you all noticed I've been going inside a lot today? And Turner's here, which means it's joke time. This is a Sony DVD, or DVD, CD player cassette player and i bought it for myself but i've stopped listening to cassettes out here and i've stopped listening to cassettes underneath my tree outside and so i only need one and i have one inside which is where i have most of my cassettes so anyway so so i decided to sell it 35 bucks plus shipping all right turner now that halloween is passed what's the next holiday Thanksgiving. And Turner's got a Thanksgiving joke for us. How does a turkey travel? How does a turkey travel? You see all this stuff in his little beak here? He even got into some stickers. How does a turkey travel? By a gravy train. By a gravy train. I like that. Very good, buddy. Bye. By the way, for those of you that might ask, that's going to North Carolina, so we're going to make money on shipping on that because we charge $15.99. All right, Turner said that he got all those little prick prickly things out of out of Wallen's face, and Wallen took off as soon as he saw the Mike Vick jersey. So I'm out of here. And that Mike Vick jersey, I think it's on field maybe, NFL players. That one sold for, I don't know what it sold for. What did it sell for? $42. Was it plus shipping or free shipping? That one was free shipping, so that we kept all those jerseys free shipping. We're in them for $10, bucks, which is going to lead me to the next topic. And this comment came on a video, a Commonwealth Picker video, where I picked these up and I paid $60 for, $65 for them. And I said in the video, I, I certainly hope, I think I can double up, maybe triple up. And the comment was, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not going to spend more than 10% on an item. So if it's a dollar, I need to at least sell it for 10. Or if I'm going to sell it for 10, I can't pay more than a dollar. If it's a hundred, I won't pay more than 10. And I kind of get that, but I actually think, and I've talked about this before, that how much money will you make per hour on an item is far more important to me than that. Now, there are some exceptions to the rule. There's a lot of things that people wouldn't want to pay 65 and wait for a net profit return of, say, 80. They're not going to do it. To me, I would do that. And like, let's look at a couple items. You know, all items are not made alike. Like I would not want to pay more than $2 for that. I mean, I just, I can't imagine paying three to sell it for 50. Well, I probably would. I'd probably pay three to sell for 15 because it's so stinking easy. But yeah, I'd like to pay a dollar for that item. But when you go higher and higher and higher, I think it makes more sense. Like what I say this sold for 114. There's no reason that I couldn't pay. I wouldn't leave this behind. At, if somebody said, hey, I have to have, what's what's 10% of that? I got to have 12 bucks for this. You know, or excuse me, if somebody says I have to pay 12 for this, are you going to leave that behind if it's 20? I wouldn't leave it behind if it's 20. I didn't leave it behind if it's 20. There's way more money to be made in this. Even if you paid 40 for this, there's way more money to be made for your time 
than paying a dollar and making 10. And I just want to get your opinion because we all talk about, you know, even on large items, I really look to triple up. This was kind of an exception because I just thought they were so amazing. But in the boxes, you just never see. And I think that that's key because I paid $10 for that jersey. But I paid for $10 for tons and tons of jerseys. Some of them have gone for 70 80 100 bucks, where I'm still going to make a decent profit at $42 free shipping. I'm still going to make 20 bucks on that thing. 10 into... Ten dollars into a twenty dollar profit that's tripling up essentially, and that's the kind of thing I'm not gonna pass up. You know, if you sell something for a hundred and whatever that's so a hundred dollars, you know, you wouldn't pay twenty five. Would you leave it behind for twenty five? I think some people would, and some people wouldn't. I it's just too much money to be made on it. Now, if it's an extreme long tail item, I kind of get it because you don't want to wrap up your capital, but I want to get your little rules that you have out there when you're sourcing. I don't really have hard and fast rules. I really try not to pay more than a third, but I wouldn't pay a third for a $10 item. I'm not going to pay three bucks for a $10 item, but I would pay $30 for a $100 item. So that's the way my mind works. I want to know what your rules are out there sourcing in the comments below. Here's one that I probably wouldn't pay $3 for, Tweety Bird, but I'd pay a dollar for it and sell it for 10 because it's Tweety Bird. And I almost didn't do that because it had no tag on the back. The tag is where a lot of times you can get those extra source of, of info. You know, is it vintage? What's the tag on it? And you can get more information, make more money. But Tweety Bird, so for $10 plus shipping, I think I paid a buck. Headed back to the plush bin again, and here's another example. I paid $2 a piece for these, sold them together for 22 bucks plus shipping. Now I gotta find them. The reason I did, it, well, there's a decent amount of profit, 4 into 22, you know, minus fees and all that. You're making for, I don't know, 8, you're making like $13, maybe, four, something like that. And it's two Harry Potters. We put them together. Where's the other one? There it is. Look down and I see it. They're Lego Harry Potter plush. And those two sold together, like I said, $21.80 plus shipping to a viewer. Selling them separately would have been hard at $10 each. Putting them together, you make a little bit more money. Ship them out together, save the, the buyer a little bit of money too. And these are going to Tim. Hi, Kevin. My wife and I are big Harry, or my wife is a big Harry Potter fan. We enjoy watching your videos. If you do not, okay, here it is. Shout out our son's store. Sure. Cincinnati-Reds is the eBay store. Very cool. And he says, I use all caps because I'm a disabled vet. Helps me see what I'm writing. Tim and Roberta. Tim, thank you. Roberta, thank you. Tim, thank you for your service. You know, I was talking about this with my kids the other day. I'm like, I was in the world that we live in, you know, and so many young men are now being called on to, to action like you were, I'm certain. Well, maybe you weren't. I don't know. But... You certainly are a disabled vet, and we appreciate you. You know, we live in Bedford, Virginia, or near Bedford, Virginia, and the National D-Day Memorial is here. And so when I talked to Turner about it and Reagan and, and, and Bubba in the past, you know, it's amazing because those young men, the National D-Day Memorial here, the sacrifices that they knew they were making is just, it's, you know, I, I feel incredibly fortunate to grow up in an era where people of my age weren't really called upon like so many other generations. And I certainly hope that's the case for a long time, but sometimes looking around at the world, it, it makes me wonder. Sold a Family Guy figure. I always look here because I've got a couple here, but I don't think it is. It's here in the back and we had the Family Guy auction. Thank you for all the support over on Whatnot. My, the girls put together that auction and they did a terrific job. And we of course appreciate the support. We also have, this should come out before Aunt Lori's Whatnot. She has some amazing Christmas stuff. The 6th, Monday the 6th at, what time? 8 p.m. You can go check it out. I'll be there. It's a remote sale. It might take me a minute to dig this one out, though. All right, found it. It's a Cleveland family guy. And that one sold for $24.30 plus shipping. I've been forgetting to list Inaman for sale since we got that extra 29 thanks to 540 flips over there continued appreciation for that so we're still doing auctions i think i have one up right now and that one went to hannah for those of you who are new to the show these guys are designed to get ebay stores moving and they work 99.8 percent of the time so anyway thank you hannah 
I rarely pick these up anymore. Just not quite worth the money they used to be when everybody was cooking at home, you know. And the Vision's Corning Ware. Unless they have a lid and they're like a buck, I'm not going to pick them up. And this one didn't have a lid. I don't even know where we got it from. It's been sitting around a while. And we still decide to sell it. 12 bucks plus shipping. Next one might take me a minute to dig out here. I know it's up here somewhere. There it is right there. I don't think it'll take that long. How cool is that, by the way? I haven't showed that on a video yet. Got that at the Highway 21 sale along with that one. And let me move one more thing. Put it down here. And grab this one out of here. That minion right there. Which surprised me a little bit. Minion Dave. <laughs> There's a Minion Dave and a Minion Kevin. No Minion Carrie. Somebody go over to the Discord art for Trash to Cash and turn us all into Minions. Turn Carrie into a Minion. 33 bucks plus shipping. Finally this season, getting around to getting some consoles out. Although we have piles and piles and piles of them. And, I don't know, we might even do a whatnot. We have so many, we're not going to get them out in time. But, this one sold $47.50 plus shipping. Had two purchases from Laura. Laura, thank you. Now I just need to find them. It's my banner bin here that's some of these blankets have overloaded, but I sold two of those today. They're headed out tomorrow. So let me see if I can find it. A lavender creative memories right there. And there's a fall banner in here. Let me dig it out. There it is. I found it. Just some fall leaves and a welcome banner. One of those things I just like to sell. They don't go for big money. And to be honest, about half of the sales of these banners go to viewers so not something i suggest people do but i usually pick them up for a buck usually sell them for 10. these two total went out for 20 bucks total and they're going to laura she says hi there this is my second purchase from you i love the other scrap scrapbooking items that i bought earlier this year your channel is and your family is amazing enjoy watching every re week take care happy thanksgiving to you and yours laura laura thank you i hope you enjoy that this season gotta go inside one more time but check out that the fall leaves and they're coming down but we've enjoyed it occasionally because you guys out there watch this show which i appreciate i get folks that send me stuff and like i said 80s 80s tees.com sent me some stuff that i wear every once in a while and i think this was wrestling tees.com sent me this one and a bunch of stuff actually and i wear some of it but this one just was something i wasn't gonna wear AE All Elite Wrestling. So I'm like, eh, I'll sell it. <laughs> $21 plus shipping. $20.90 plus shipping. All right, y'all, we never showed Reagan's Halloween costume. So we decided we'd pull it out. <laughs> it's obviously made by Blue Ridge Mama. Reagan doesn't eat much food, but one of her staples is mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. They should have sponsored this thing. And she made that for you, and we decided we just had to show it to you. So, yep. any rate, thank you, Reagan. And you have a sale out of ComeOnPicker.com. Come on. Come what do you got? Celeste got a trash to cash bag. Celeste got a trash to cash Hi, IKEA Marley. bag. Hi. ComeOnPicker.com is the official home of trash to cash merch. So, Dave and Carrie get none of the money. <laughs> <laughs> any rate, thank you, Reagan. Bye. And don't forget to get your sticker at ComeOnPicker.com. What would a video be without the original mama telling me I forgot something? 95 plus shipping yep good yep hey y'all i've been ending the shows out here in the other shed lately and we've been doing some work in here as well so i figured i would this time the heater's on now it's getting chilly around here which is why i just love that mini split so anyway don't forget to go check out our whatnots when you get a minute and i think aunt Lori's november 6th 8 p.m crazy good christmas stuff Go over there and check it out. Use our link if you've never checked it out before and you get a free 15 bucks, but you gotta go through that link to get it and you've got to have never been on whatnot and bought before. So anyway, thank y'all again and I can't wait. Oh wait, hey, I can't forget to ask you guys something. Tell me again your sourcing rules out there when you're out and about sourcing. I'd like to get some new thoughts and some new ideas for myself about it. Tell me that in the comments below. We appreciate you and can't wait to see you next time.